this is Button Gwinnett's burial site, and this is the Colonial Park Cemetery in the historic district in Savannah, Georgia. Very cool. We actually live in Gwinnett County, so this is quite a privilege. And he signed the Declaration of Independence. And this is Button Gwinnett's placard. Born in 1735, died 1777. So did not live a very long life. But pretty cool. Signed the Declaration of Independence. Okay, so this is Archibald or Archibald Archibald <laughs> Archibald Bullets Gravesite. And he was the first president of Georgia, and um, he died in Savannah in 1777. He's got a pretty fancy Dan um, grave site. He's actually next to Button Gwinnett. And if you look at the placard, Theodore Roosevelt was the great great grandson of Archibald. Archibald Bullock. So that's kind of a nifty piece of trivia. So that's really neat. If you ever get the chance to come to Savannah, you have to go to the Colonial Park Cemetery. It's the oldest cemetery in Georgia, if not the south. Um, and the Sherman's troops actually stayed in the cemetery and they made it kind of like a refuge or like a camp and they messed up a lot of the gravestones and like changed a lot of the names and changed dates and um, it's messed up what they did but um, they actually used, they actually cut up some of the tombstones and made them into tents too. So anyway, interesting place to come. And this is the Graham Vault. This is where Nathaniel Green and his son were buried. And they actually exhumed their bodies and they built a monument for them in Johnson Square. And the monument in Johnson Square is absolutely gorgeous. So if you ever get the chance to come to Savannah, definitely go check out Johnson Square. Um, it's one of, I definitely think it's one of the coolest squares here in Savannah. But this used to be their resting place. And now they have a much prettier resting place. Um, so yeah. Um, and his wife actually dined with George Washington after he died. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So, um, a lot of the people here that are buried at Colonial Park Cemetery are um, yellow fever victims, and uh, there's nearly 700 Savannans that died in the year 1820 from yellow fever, and two of them were actually physicians, and one of the most heartbreaking um, headstones that I've actually seen here was a, it's like a 19-year-old boy. And he had three children and a wife. And the wife died first. And then he had three children and they were all under the age of three. And like slowly by slowly he had to watch his children die. And they all died over like a four month span. And then like the youngest child died. And then like a month later he died. So he pretty much had to watch his entire family die. And then he died, and this guy was only 19. So, anyway, very sad. Just, just wanted to show you guys this um, headstone. It's very well preserved for the age. Um, it's from 1795. She died at 45 years of age, and she's buried with her four-year-old son. Her name was... Miss Grace Belcher, 
and her son's name was James Price Belcher, and her, her son was four years old. He died in uh, 1793 as well. But um, it's a really beautiful headstone. I thought that was really sweet. They were buried together. So we're back here along the wall of the Colonial Park Cemetery and a lot of the reason why some of these are against the wall is well some of them did fall over but Sherman's troops actually took refuge or made a camp inside of Colonial Park Cemetery and they did chop up some of these gravestones and use them for tents like they just you know made them into you know your standard um, tent, you know, just pushed them together. And they also changed some of the dates on these. So some of the dates on these are wrong and that, it, like, it'll look weird because, like, some of the kids will actually be born before some of the parents or the dates will be wrong on some of the deaths or the names will be wrong. Um, so they did mess up some of these. They had a little fun. Thank you, Freaky, and I like you a lot. <laughs> but, um, considering that they did mess up some of these headstones, some of them are still in pretty good condition. And you can take tours through here and get a little bit more information. They're not that expensive, too. You can take walking tours. You can come here at night. They don't close until 8. They're open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. There's a lot of babies here. And um, there's a lot of mothers that are buried with their infant babies. And it just puts you into perspective how many mothers died during childbirth and how fortunate we are to have the um, medical equipment that we have nowadays so that things don't happen like that. I mean, they didn't have C-sections and things like that nowadays. So if you had an emergency, like the cord around the baby's neck or anything like that or um, any other kind of pregnancy emergency, the mother really couldn't be saved, so very sad how all these babies and these mothers died during childbirth. And there is a hawk right there on that fence right next to that tree. That is really amazing. Very cool. Not every day you see a hawk that up close and personal. I mean, he's literally like 30 feet away from me.